we're going to play a story in here for a second. So yep. you go back since 28. It's been only four times, right? Uh, yep. The S&P has been down two years in a row. Yep. 1929 to 32. It was for four years. I don't know if you think this. I don't think we're like 1929 right no. now. At least I'm praying that's not the case. Right. Okay, it gets more complicated. Three years in a row, uh, 1939 to 41, and then 2000 to 2002. Mm-hmm. Could we be in a 2000 to 2002-ish period? That feels a little bit closer to mm-hmm. the life we're living right now. When you think about what's happened in tech uh, back yep. then in terms of the, the dot-com bubble and uh, then the bust, of course. And then, of course, two years in a row happened once in 73, mm-hmm. 74, and that was when we had severe inflation. Right. Yeah, I mean, you you think about it, the, the, the tech bubble. I mean, we had historically high infl- high valuations in. A year ago, valuations were high. That was a concern. Clearly, they've come back. And honestly, if you're just all in tech, you mentioned NASDAQ down 33% for the year. It might feel kind of like that. But like the, we said, the Dow's only down nine. So there's other factors that have been better. Um, you know, but again, yes, inflation's high. I mean, let's be honest. The Fed 15 months ago was saying one 25 basis point hike this year. We know they did more. The Fed is not perfect. I mean, we think they're kind of behind the curve a little bit uh, once again, like a lot of other people who've come on the show saying something similar to that. And then potentially um, the big worry to me, right? Could they yeah. just keep hiking right into a, a recession? We think we're going to avoid a recession because the consumer is still strong. That's the thing we're worried about. But Andrew, we just don't see two down years in a row with some of these positives that are still out there. Okay. So what, if that's the case, what do you buy? Yeah, well, we would stick with what's kind of been working, right? Your cyclical values. Look at industrials. Look at like something like deer, right? Caterpillar. I mean, it doesn't look like a global recession to me when some of those things are leading. So we like industrials. We still like those value names in general. Uh, we also like small caps, right? If the, you know, if the economy can avoid a recession like we think, small caps is one area that could do uh, pretty well, you know, the next 12 months or so. Those are areas we'd stick with. What do you do about what I call the, the legacy bull names? Yeah. Fang stocks. Mm-hmm. Well, we've been underweight those all year. And to be honest, we're still underweight those. It doesn't mean you just outright avoid them because, boy, those are some good companies making a lot of money. But we're not seeing any just relative strength. Right? I want to see some type of a sign of a bottom, and it doesn't feel like that. It feels like that catch a falling knife mentality. So it's a group, you know, communications and technology, the big legacy names, like you said, are runs that we've, what are you we've waiting said probably for? be underweight. What's the, but what's going to be the high sign for you? Well, I mean, you know, I guess let's put it this way. To finally start to see some relative strength, right? If you just look at those, you know, technology and communications versus S&P 500, just some type of a bottom on relative strength. We're not there yet. Let's be very clear. That's one thing we want to see. But until we see that, it's just a group we'd still be underweight here.